do tonight on we serve a limitless God. You know, God is infinite. God is all-powerful. He's all-knowing. He's all-capable. There are no limits restricting God, yet despite this, to their own harm, his followers tend to limit the power of God by error in his thinking. Well, tonight we hope to... Uh, we hope to look at some promises of God's word that will dispel that anti-biblical thinking and open up your heart to receiving the unlimited, immeasurable blessings of God. Will that be all right? Yes, Amen. We're only human, and uh, sometimes we can limit God. But he is unlimited. He loves to work doing, making the impossible possible. And we see it many times, and those of you that have been on the way for many years have seen it, but sometimes along the way, when things come our way, we kind of forget about how God has done such works and miracles in people's lives. And uh, we kind of forget about it. And, uh, but we're only human. Amen. That's the human part of us. Well, so in other words, the more we keep in the spirit, the more we're going to believe in what God has for us. Some people get to church on Sunday and they try to live all week on what they've done, done 10 minutes at the altar. And it might have been all hollering and no word. A lot of people like a hip and hype and hop and service. I do. But you've got to have the word of God. Because faith cometh by hearing and hearing cometh from the word of God. A lot of times people look for a word and uh, want somebody to come and give them a word. But if they just listened to the preacher preaching, he already probably gave them that word. But they didn't listen because maybe the preacher didn't shake their hand on the way in or something and... Got a little kernel. That happens. Never happened to me. But, <laughs> but it's probably happened to all of us. But uh, we just have to have ears to hear what the Spirit would have to say to us. Amen. Psalm 78, verse 40 to 43 says, How oft did they provoke him in the wilderness and, and grieve him in the desert? They, they turned turn back and tempted God and limit, limited the Holy One of Israel. They remembered not his hand, nor the day when he delivered them from the enemy. How he had wrought his signs in Egypt and his wonders in the field of Zoan. Now these people, if anyone should know, you can't limit God. They vexed the Holy One of Israel. They did not remember his power. The day he redeemed them from the oppressor, the day he displayed his miraculous signs in Egypt, his wonders in the region of Zoan, and they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. Israel diminished their expectations of our unlimited God. In other words, they provoked God with their contempt and ingratitude, and that can happen. So... If it happened in the Bible days, don't feel too bad if, if it happens to you today. Because it happened to these people who just seen, you know, great signs and wonders. They didn't remember his power and his miraculous signs. You know, the, the ten plagues, uh, parting of the Red Sea, cloud by day and pillar of fire by night. They had shoes that never wore out. Some of you ladies would like to live then. You'd only had one pair of shoes for 40 years. <laughs> uh, I think even my wife back then would have probably provoked God for another pair of shoes. <laughs> it's just a woman thing, I know. Amen. But as long as we keep them in shoes, we'll keep them happy, that's for sure. You know, they had water from a rock, manna from heaven, angel food. God did all kinds of things for these people, but yet they limited the Holy One of Israel. Every time something come up, well, I wonder what's going to happen. How are we going to get out of this mess? Doesn't that happen to us too sometimes? We just get in a scrape and we forget how far God has brought us from. Amen. They put their own limitations of God's in intervention in their lives by failing to remember his historically demonstration powers and signs and wonders. And today is no different. We need to uh, have the same message today. We need to preach and teach in doctrine and demonstration. Amen. That's what Paul came in, the power of doctrine and demonstration. He not only preached someone could get saved, they got saved. He not only preached someone could get healed, they got healed. He not only preached someone could get delivered, they got delivered. Amen. That's the same Jesus today. Same Jesus 
is still today as he was then. He's no different. But like, like Israel of old, sometimes too, we have put limits on God, not necessarily deliberately, but we still often diminish our expectations of his endless power on our behalf. We consider him sometimes less omnipotent, all-powerful. We doubt his constant willingness to bless. We do not remember his power or his miraculous signs and his wonders. We forget, he says, I am the Lord thy God, I change not. He is forever the same and all-powerful. God who delights in blessing his people. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Let's talk about a little bit about healing. Jesus healed all who came to him in faith, believing. Amen. Yeah? The apostle Peter healed individuals and the multitudes. The apostle Paul had a remarkable record of ministering divine healing. Philip had great healings in Samaria. God, through a disciple named Ananias, healed Paul's blindness. Not just Jesus, but the believers did these works. And that's what he told us. You marvel at what I do, but you're going to do these things and even greater once you receive the Holy Ghost. Amen. Your Holy Ghost is power. Amen. But we don't want to just sit and let that power lie dominant in our lives. We've got to get out and use it. Amen. We have to exercise our faith and our gifts and giftings. Do not restrict God to healing only through apostles. It's the honor and privilege of all believers to lay hands on the sick. You know, we don't have to call the pastor every time. Call our neighbor. They could come and pray for you. You don't have to run off somewhere trying to find an oil bottle. You already have the Holy Ghost anointing. Now, I believe in anointing people with oil. That's Bible. But a lot of times we get hung up on things and we forget who we serve. You know, Jesus is in us. We have the Holy Ghost. We have our angels around about us, ministering spirits. We're never alone. But we feel alone sometimes because we forget. We put limitations on God. And we just all we've got to do is reach out to him sometimes, you know. Just whisper his name. Even if we're alone, uh, just whisper his name and start to praise him and start thanking him for the blood and the cross and what he's done for you. First thing you know, you're going to start feel something, a little tingling sensation, the Holy Ghost companion. And first thing you know, you're in an atmosphere of praise and worship, and whatever your problem was, you probably forgot by the time you come out of it. That's just how simple it is. We make things difficult. We limit God when all the time it's ourself that's limiting God. Amen. We can make the pastor's jobs a lot easier if we quit limiting God. Amen. And just, just think about the power that he gave us and what you can do. Amen. Uh, just everybody has something they can do. You know, just you just got to find that little nook, whatever it is you have. If you're a great talker, you'd be a great witness. You know, if you don't talk too much, you still be a great witness because all it takes is a word. God will give you the wisdom and knowledge. Amen. Because he only gives us a word of knowledge because if you give us all knowledge, blow our head off. So sometimes all we need is a word of knowledge. Amen. There's so many people today looking, looking for something and and they don't know how to get it. They're looking for joy. But Jesus told us a long time ago in the Bible how to get joy. He said it's righteousness, peace, and joy. Couldn't get more simpler than that. All that means is you get right with Jesus, make peace with your Lord and Savior, you're going to get joy unspeakable. It's always in the third dimension that God works his sovereign power. It's always the third of the threes. There's grace. And then there's great grace. There's death, burial, resurrection. Amen. You, you, you can, men can kill you, and, and Joseph can bury you, but only God can raise him from the dead. It's in that third dimension. Amen. Oh, I just did the old tabernacle is a great study, and I, I've studied some, probably not enough, but th there's laid out in three dimensions. Because that's how his power, that's where his power is. You know, you, could, you come into his gates with praise and thanksgiving. Amen. And then God's going to bless you. Amen. You just, just don't come into church and sit down and, you know, cross your arms and twiddle your thumbs and, and expect God to do something. You, you have to do something. Every time Jesus did something in the Bible, somebody had to do something. He just didn't heal the cripple. He said, take up your bed and walk. If he'd never picked up his bed and walked, he probably never would have been healed. 
He always gives you a word of wisdom. And as soon as you obey that word of wisdom, he does the work. Amen. Isn't God wonderful? Amen. Amen. For the worshiper of God, he is the Lord who will take sickness from you. Amen. It says in Exodus 23, 25, and 26, it talks about worship the Lord your God and his blessings will be on your food and water. And I will take away sickness from among you. He didn't say I might or maybe. He said I will take away sickness. We wonder sometimes, I know God doesn't heal everybody, but that we pray for, but yet that person probably lived longer than if you hadn't prayed for them when you think about it. God can add time to people's lives to get right with God. They might not be saved. Many times I've prayed for people that weren't Christians with cancer, and they only had three months, but after I prayed for them, they had a year. And so they, God gave them, allowed them that time to get right. He's a merciful God. And a lot of times we would see somebody and say, you know, I don't, I don't care if that person ever gets saved. You know, that would be our attitude like as a human being. But God never looks that way. He always deals in the impossible. There's no limits to God. What we think would uh, be a limit to God is, is nothing. Nothing. After all he's done for us, went to the cross, you know, and shed his blood for us. He did it all so that we could have all. And, you know, hallelujah is the highest praise you can give God. There's a chorus about it. And that just simply means in Hebrew, all of me for God. So everybody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's got all you now. <laughs> Amen. So let all your diseases mean exactly that. Don't limit God. Amen. Exodus 15 and 16, if you listen carefully to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his eyes, if you pay attention to his commandments and keep all his decrees, I will not bring on you any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. I never once read where he says maybe or might or I can. He always says I will, I will. And it's neat because he did God's will on the cross. Amen. For the godly believer, God is not the afflictor with diseases, but the healer from diseases. A sick lady once said, maybe God is not willing to heal me quickly, but rather is teaching me through this and is blessing others by my example. But not really, because she ruined it. She went, she went to a doctor. <laughs> so she frustrated God's plan, Frustr frustrated God's plan by seeking medical help. Now, there's nothing wrong with doctors. But if God told you he was putting you through something to help somebody else, just go through it. <laughs> Trust God. If, if he's using that for that purpose, don't ruin it by seeking, help, seeking medical help. But we believe in doctors and we believe in medical help. Amen? Because lots of times God uses doctors to do one thing and he finishes it. Doctor can cut you, make a decision, take something out of you, but it's God that's going to heal you. Your body is wonderfully and purely made. It heals itself. Where the doctor says you go home and you rest and in three weeks you'll heal. But you could go to church on a Sunday and someone pray for you and it could take three hours. It might take three days. So God's a healer. Amen. And healing is, is great because it, it builds your faith because uh, you're seeing every day what God is doing and it's building your faith because I'm, I'm better today than I was yesterday and Next week, I'm way better than I was last week. I think uh, last night we were at a benefit at Pastor Hayward Storage Church for him and his wife, and the McGuire's were there. And I was just thinking, like, how miraculously God is healing him and bringing him, like, forward. And he's only got, I think, two weeks left in the Stan Cassidy, and he's going home, and he's just got to go back twice a week. And, uh, but to see him, and I imagine most of you have seen him on uh, Facebook, and uh, from the beginning to now, it's just incredible what God has done. And it builds our faith by seeing somebody do that. Amen. Seeing God work the way he does work. And, uh, and it's going to affect his ministry. It's going to impact him and his ministry a lot. And it's going to affect everybody around him. I know it builds my faith when I see that happen. 
Yes, because we don't know from one day to the next what's going to happen to us. We pull out on the road someday just to make a 20-minute drive, and it might take us four months to get home again, end up in a hospital. But God will bring us through it. Yes. Amen. And just, just we can't forget about these things. When we get to go through something, just think about Brother McGuire. Think about Pastor Hayward Stewart and his wife. Now God has healed them and brought them forward, you know, and it's great to see these things happen because it builds our faith. Talking about miracles, amen. Miracles are not only for Bible days, but they're for today. Amen. We read about things that's happened all through the Bible, great miracles and wonders and signs, but it's for today. Because Jesus said, I am the Lord, not I, I am the Lord, I change not. Amen. And he is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Jesus performed miracles in the first century. He's the same today and still does miracles in this, this day. Amen. Neither God the Father nor Jesus his Son has changed. They worked miracles among the people in the Old Testament and they worked miracles in the New Testament through Jesus his Son. Amen. Jesus said, My Father worketh and I worketh hither too. I can only do what I see the Father do. Whatever is bound on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever is loosed on earth is loosed in heaven. This is the power that a child of God has today. Every, everyone in here that's saved, baptized, filled with the Holy Ghost, you have that same power. We don't have to limit God. We don't have to wait for a, a special speaker to come or a special evangelist to, to, you know, inspire us and get our faith built. We should have that all the time. And when that evangelist or special speaker comes, God's going to move greater because you prepared the way for him. You, you've already built up. Your church is built up. Everybody's faith is up. You're you're full of the Holy Ghost, and, and you're seeking God and praying and reading your Bible. And when that man of God comes, he's going to be twice as powerful. Don't expect uh, an evangelist to do all the work because he, he needs help too. And God has lots of people to help him. He has lots of saints praying and seeking him. Amen. The story in Second Kings of, um, of the widow who needed some help because her husband died and they, they were coming to take her children. That's what they did in those days if they had any bills when they came and took the kids to work off the payments. Elisha said, go. Word of wisdom. Go around and ask all your neighbors for empty jars. Don't ask for just a few. He already took the limits off of God. If he didn't, he would have said, go get a jar. But he said, go get, go get jars, not a few. He knew there was no limits on God. He knew he could fill more than one jar. He says, then go inside, shut the door behind you and your sons, pour oil into all the jars, and as each is filled, put it to one side. And when all the jars were full, she said to her son, bring me another one. But he replied, there is not a jar left. The oil stopped flowing. Now here's a good point for you people that pray for the sick. The oil will keep flowing as long as there's empty vessels around to lay hands on. There's lots of oil. Amen. Oil of the Holy Ghost. Bring me another one, but reply, there is not a jar left, and the oil stopped flowing. She went and told the man of God, and he said, go sell the oil, pay your debts, and you and your sons can live off what is left. Now, there's a lot in the last two sentences. God met not only her immediate needs, but, but he, uh, he um, served a long-range need. She not only had enough oil to pay off her debt, as far as I can see, that oil kept flowing because he said live off the rest. So they lived however long, that oil was still there. Amen. So the oil of the Holy Ghost should never run out in our lives. It should go on and keep filled, Let's keep that vessel filled. Amen. Because if you want to get a work done for God, you're going to have to be full of the Holy Ghost and you're going to have to go around and do something for God. Because as long as we sat dormant and do nothing, we become runted, stunted, and dead. That's why we get discouraged sometimes because we're not doing anything. We just have to do something. This is the same in the physical realm. Well, I'd like to be retired, but I know if I was home after a couple of three months, I wish I was working again. <laughs> and it's the same with working for God. You know what? The more you do for God, the better you feel. You think you're helping somebody else, but also... You're helping yourself. You don't even know it. But it's God that's helping you. He's blessing you for what you're doing for him to somebody. Amen. There, you can't put limits on God. 
Amen. Don't, don't be satisfied with when you give one Bible study. Give three or four more. You keep going. You keep going. Every time I give a Bible study, I learn something. I've never seen it the first time. I've never seen it the third time. I've never seen it the fourth time. But I'm learning every time you give one, you learn something. You, you'd never, if you read this Bible and you read it for 150 years, you'd, you'd still be getting things new every day from the Word of God because it's alive and growing and it helps us. Amen? Praise God. God miraculously filled every single jar brim full and delivered the widow from her poverty. Amen. Elijah knew that there were no limits on God. Bring all the jars. Amen. Not just one. When you pray for people, don't just pray for one. Go to another one. Pray for another one. Pray for another one. And you'll feel the oil of the Holy Ghost coming up in you and flowing and flowing and flowing and flowing until you stop. It only stops when you stop. Amen. So if we need a miracle in our life today, don't ask for just a little of God's help. Don't limit or extend to which Almighty God can help you. His ability to meet your need is without limitations. If the Lord says, come, then you come. Like Peter, you can walk on the water. Amen. And Matthew, Jesus said, O ye of little faith. And Mark, he said, how come you got no faith? And Luke, he says, where is your faith? See, some's got a little, some's got none, some misplaced theirs. But we all have a margin of faith, the Bible says. We all have a margin of faith. He said, it's faith the size of a mustard seed, but move a mountain. Now, some people have faith the size of a mustard Mountain, but can't move a mustard seed. Because it's their own faith. But they need God's faith. Amen. Praise God. I'm glad for God's faith. Amen. I believe God, God can do anything but fail. Amen. If, we, if we're in the Walmart or if we're out somewhere, some store, wherever we are, we, we just meet somebody and they start talking to you. Maybe a complete stranger. But they have a need. God sent them to you in the first place because you're lit. And they notice something different, and they just start talking to you, and the next thing you know, they're telling you what's wrong with them, what they have for a problem. All you have to do is take them by the hand and whisper a little prayer. That's all it takes. God, God will minister. It's not all about hollering and jumping up and down. Jesus said it's not by might or power, but by my spirit. And we can minister anywhere, at any time. We cannot limit God. Amen. Many times we've been just singing at concerts <clears throat> and someone will come up to us at the end and want a prayer. And, you know, we just take them by the hand quietly and pray. That's what the Bible tells us to do. So we just repeat and repeat. We do what God says. Amen. It's very simple. You don't have to be a well-known evangelist or anything like that. You're a vessel of God. God uses you just the same as anybody else. He's no respect for persons. I mean, that's why I'm here. He's no respecter of persons. Never dreamed I'd be behind a bull bit one day, but once I took the limits off of God, here I am. Amen. And God also provides provision for us. Amen. He's, he's Jesus. Remember Jesus miraculously multiplying the loaves and fishes and feeding thousands as a result? He is the same. Amen. Today as he was then. Amen. Remember Abraham and Isaac, when they went to the mountain, he said, Jehovah Jireh, he is my provider, and he provided the ram, amen, for the sacrifice. But I'm glad God provided the supreme sacrifice. John says, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. I'm glad for that sacrifice today so that we can have life and have life more abundantly, amen. God will provide. Jesus said he'll supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Jesus Christ. In other words, to the giving believer, God will supply all your needs. We just have to let our all be all. Don't underestimate God's ability and his willingness to provide for you. His bounty is unlimited. Amen. Praise God. I'll ask him to come back to the music this time. song my God can do anything but fail amen remember the three Hebrew children in the fiery furnace Daniel in the lion's head Peter freed from jail by an angel these are things that a limitless God can do
Peter was in prison and they were having an all night prayer meeting for him and they heard a knock at the door and Rhoda came to the door and there's Peter. She's so excited, she don't even open the door, she just runs back and tells them, you can stop praying because Peter's here. They said, oh no, that, that can't be Peter, he's in prison. The very thing they're praying for is for Peter to get out of prison. <laughs> and he's at the door. So finally, of course, they all go to the door and there he is, standing there. A limitless God. Amen. Praise God. They all have angels. They thought it was his angel. And uh, can we get this cord, this mic on? Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay. A limitless God. God will do anything but fail, and he'll do anything that we believe he can do. He will do it. I'm just going to tell you this little story. I didn't plan this, but I'm going to tell it to you anyway. I'm going to ask my wife to stand. And uh, a limitless God. People prayed for me when I was in sin. Just to show you what a limitless God can do that you can look at right now. And although you may know people in here that God has done things for, but people prayed for me, and I was, at the time, I was in the world playing country music, traveling around. And I was in Nashville, and I was decided I was going to stay there because uh, some musicians that I talked to that knew where they're talking about said, if you stay here, Within two months, you'll have a contract. So we don't tell this to everybody, but we're telling you. So I decided I was going to stay. That night, I went back and went to sleep. And I was woken up in the morning. God, God spoke to me because people were praying. A limitless God. And the boy said, call your brother. And I thought, oh, that's strange. When I get up and have breakfast, I come back, I'll give him a call. And I just turned around, put my feet on the floor, and the phone started ringing. It was my brother's wife. And said, your brother's in the hospital, and he's right on the verge of a diabetic coma. So I had to make a choice at that time in my life go the direction I wanted to go in or serve God. But we're talking about a limitless God who knows far beyond what we can see before it even happens. So I knew then, I changed my mind, I come home, and it took me a while to get right with God, but I did get right with God in 2005 in July. So I get right with God in 2005 my wife was living in Halifax, I believe, at the time. She moves home in September to take a couple steps this way. <laughs> so I went to Victory Tabernacle for one night to hear a young man preach, and this, this is where I met my wife. And before that, God had given me a dream about a woman. And I, I could see her exactly, but I couldn't see her face. And that night, when I went there, she came in the door, and, and that hit me about that dream. The way she walked in the door, and the way her hair was, the way she looked. And I said, no, that can't be right. We serve a limitless God. So I met a lot of different people I hadn't seen for years that night, for 25 years. And after, and all, all she said was, you know, I don't know if you remember me, my name is Julie Young, and I knew you years ago, and and I said, yes, I remember you. That's all there was to it. So when I went home that night, I was just laying in bed, and I was thinking about all the people I had seen, you know, and hadn't seen for years, and I seen them that night. And as I thought of each one, their face would come up before me. And when I had thought of her, there was no face. So I, I'm still questioning a limitless God. And I said, God... If this is you, you'll have to get her to call me because I'm not calling her. Imagine. And the next thing I know, the phone rings. Are you read yet? And so she invites me to the, I think it was the Christmas banquet or something. Yeah. So that's how it all started. And you pretty much know the rest. But another thing was, through all that, 
how God spoke to me in Nashville. And we met and got married. And shortly after, my brother needed a kidney. Guess who the only match was? We serve a limitless God. Amen. Don't limit God. We don't know. We have no idea about somebody when they come in the doors, what they're going through, how their life has been. But God knows. And all we need to do is accept them and pray with them and help them be a witness to them. I just feel tonight we've taken the limits off of God. And I want anybody tonight that is sick in your body or you want to do something for God and you've been waiting and, and holding back a bit, God will take the limits off tonight. So anybody that is sick in their body or you want to do something for God, whether it's teach a Bible study or help in a church, whatever, be a missionary, you, you, the sky is the limit when you trust Jesus. You know, it's never into the hearts of man what he has prepared for them that love him. And all he is looking for is a willing vessel. I would not be here tonight if somebody had to put a limit on God and said, that guy will never be saved. He's too far gone. But thank God for praying mothers and saints that know no limits to God. Amen. So anybody that is sick in their body, anybody that uh, has lost loved ones, you want to do work for God, I want you to just come down to the front. And we're just going to pray with y'all. I'm going to ask Pastor to help me. And you can come anytime. We're ready to take the limits off God.